Harry worked really hard. I mean, he was a real, true entrepreneur. He started the business in 1954. He willed it into existence. He built it one customer at a time. And that takes time, it takes effort. Harry didn't lay it out that I had to be another Harry, and I've never tried to be Harry. Uh, I've tried to learn from him. I've tried to honor him. Um, but I also tried to compliment him, and I would, he'd be the first to say that his skill set is very different than mine. The year was 1954. Elvis Presley had just released his first single. Marilyn Monroe and Joe DiMaggio were married, and The Tonight Show debuted on NBC television. That year, a young, fashion-savvy entrepreneur named Harry Rosen and his brother Lou opened their first store on Parliament Street in Toronto's Cabbage Town. With a $500 loan and a vision of what Canadian men's fashion should be, they willed the Harry Rosen brand into existence. Soon, Harry Rosen was the talk of the town. Very few people really understand what Harry did there. He went to New York in, I guess, around 57, and he bought a suit. In New York on Madison Avenue at that time, the natural shouldered look and clothing was what the young people were wearing. Harry loved the look, and he bought a suit, and he brought it back here, and he gave it to uh, Copley, who was our first supplier at that time, and asked them to replicate it. And what was amazing was this very quickly became the look that the young, smart businessmen in Toronto aspired to. And they flocked in droves to this little offbeat store on Parliament Street to get the Harry Rosen look. By 1961, growing popularity led to a much larger Richmond Street location to serve the fast-growing legion of loyal Bay Street businessmen more efficiently which, as Harry knew, is what it's all about. Talk about a bold move. I mean, some people moved to a store twice as big, but he moved to a store that was about 10 times as large. That was our Richmond Street store, which he opened up and suddenly became even a bigger success. It was a remarkable story of entrepreneurial will. The Harry Rosen Company was built on two simple ideas, love of the customer and an encyclopedic knowledge of the tastes of each and every client. The customer was king. With Harry's undeniable confidence in his stock and trade and his natural flair for innovation, he offers up the first of a long and illustrious history of marketing campaigns. In 1962, they started the Ask Harry campaign, the first ad he paid two suits for. He started advertising full page in the Globe every Tuesday. Now, this was unheard of for a relatively small store. People started saying, Ask Harry. Whatever it was, Ask Harry. And Harry became the iconic expert in menswear and men's quality issues. And people from out of town read his ads. With growing national demand for the Harry Rosen look, the store's Canada-wide expansion was a fait accompli. It was in the nation's capital, rightly enough, that Harry Rosen took its place as Canada's brand name in men's fashion. The crowning achievement came in 1987 with the opening of the 32,000-square-foot flagship store on Toronto's Bloor Street. Sitting on a balcony in Florence in about 1997 with Harry, and Harry sharing a vision with me of creating a new magazine that would talk intelligently to men about menswear and men's lifestyles. That vision became Harry Magazine. It's an institution. It's regarded by all as the standard for a lifestyle magazine in menswear. Harry Rosen remains a proud, thriving, made-in-Canada success story, and for 60 years and counting, part of retail history. Ceaselessly innovative, with a distinguished history of firsts in retail fashion, it's now embarking on the company's largest capital expansion program yet, increasing its retail footprint by 40% over five years. We're really a family. This is a company of hard-working people that care about a dream, a vision. The sum of the parts creates a much bigger whole. The remarkable has become the expected for this distinguished and highly admired operation, which began in that small shop on Parliament Street by a very well-turned-out man named Harry.